Hello and welcome to the Whirly Bloke channel. Today I'm going to show you how to hook up telemetry on a Diatone GT2 2017 and display it on a Tyrannus X9D. Right out of the box the Diatone GT2 2017 model isn't set up to send telemetry back to the transmitter although it's completely capable of it. It's really odd that Diatone don't wire this up for you and is just another one of those great mysteries like why isn't the buzzer installed for you? The GT2 uses the Fury F3 flight controller which has got three UARTs and one of them can be configured to transmit telemetry data from the flight control to the receiver. It's just not wired up. I think most people know basically what telemetry is all about. It's about getting some data back from your quad and displaying it or using it for alarms on your transmitter. But judging by the number of questions I get, there's still obviously lots of confusion. So I thought I'd do a really quick backgrounder to unravel some of the myths and you'll see that basically it's all pretty straightforward. So if you've got a telemetry capable receiver like the FR Sky X4R or the XSR, then it will already send back some telemetry data to the transmitter. The signal strength, the RSSI, and the battery voltage is already transmitted. But the flight controller over here has got loads more sensors and data that it's really useful to take advantage of. And the actual data and sensors available depends on the flight controller, but they all provide the main LiPo battery voltage, which is probably the most useful one. You can also get things like the battery current, temperature, barometer or altitude readings. And all this data is output on one of the UARTs on the flight controller. And if we wire this to the smart port on the receiver, this will all then be sent back to the transmitter. And the smart port, or the S port, is just a duplex port on the receiver, and that simply means it can transmit and receive data at the same time. And we're going to use it to receive the telemetry data from the flight controller and send it out to the Tyrannus. The diatone version of the Fury F3 flight controller has got three UARTs. UART 3 over here is used for the receiver, so you can use either UART 1 here or UART 2 here for your telemetry. It just needs wiring up and configuring in beta flight. So the first thing to do is to get the bag of extra cables and wires that came with your GT2 and look for a four pin connector which we're going to connect onto UART2 which is that guy down there. Have a quick look. There we go, four pin connector. So much stuff in there, it's great. So trying to get into that connector down there is a bit tricky and we could sort of like force our way in but actually the easiest way to do it is just to remove this antenna mount on the back here so we can get in and the quickest way to do that is just get rid of these bolts there we go. and we can undo that one giving us a bit more room. So here we've got our four pin connector and we need to plug that into UART2 which is connected down here. Now the pin we actually want to connect up is pin 2 running from right to left it's 1, 2, 3, 4. Pin 2 is transmit and we want to connect that onto our XSR transmitter, sorry receiver and we're going to be wiring that onto pin 3 which is that one there. I've already pre-tinned these when I connected the board up in the first place but that if you look closely on there is the S port or smart port. We just need to wire those two together and then we can configure everything else in beta flight. Um, to be honest the easiest way to do this is just get rid of the other cables Oops. 
There we go, that can plug straight in there. So we've got pin 2 from UART2, the transmit cable. We just need to solder that onto smart port on the receiver, which is pin 3. But uh, we're going to need some more heat shrink, so let's put that on first because we won't be able to get it on afterwards. So we just need to get the heat shrink shrunk and we can get everything back together. That's all the wiring we need to do for this. So it's a really easy, just one wire that you need to connect, just knowing where to connect it. So now all we need to do is configure the connection and telemetry data in Betaflight. We have got our quad connected to our computer and we've got our transmitter on and the model selected, which is all good. So we can go into Betaflight and connect to our quad, which is great. Give it a waggle round just to check that we're talking. Excellent. So if you go to the ports section, um, and as you can see here, we've got three UARTs, and this guy at the top, don't mess with that, because that is the USB connection to the flight controller board. If you start mucking about with that and do something wrong or whatever, that uh, means you're not gonna be able to talk um, to the, uh, the quad, and that's gonna ruin your day. UART one is not being used. UART 3, um, we've got this set up as Serial RX because we are using UART 3 is talking to the receiver and that's SBUS. But we connected pin 2 on UART 2 which is the transmit pin um, and we need to configure that to tell the flight controller that it should send its telemetry or its sensor data on UART 2 pin 2, so we don't need to do anything except change this to smart port, which is all good. So we'll do a save and reboot. <coughs> Connect back to our quad. Now we need to turn on telemetry, so go to the configuration tab and as it turns out telemetry is turned on if on yours um, telemetry is not turned on just turn it on which is fine and then you can hit save and reboot remember unless you do that it's not committing those changes to the quad okay so everything's set up now if we go back to our radio and press menu Long press page, long press page to go back to page 12, which is the telemetry page. And we've got no sensors showing here at all at the moment. So let's scroll down to discover new sensors. Hit enter. And a whole load of stuff appears on here now. So if we scroll back up to the top here, what have we got? Temperature. Don't know what that is. RSSI, great. The receiver battery. We've got a whole load of ex oh, accelerate, 
there we go if we move that around we can see that the accelerometer outputs are moving as well which is great but interestingly what we don't have on here is the main battery voltage and there's a very good reason for that and this is one of the things that a lot of people get confused about so we'll leave we'll st say stop discovery go back to beta flight and just I'll show you the buttons to press to make this work go back to your configuration tab and what can happen is it's very easy to not realize that these two things here which are the battery voltage and the current sensor if you haven't got those turned on they won't be transmitted those values won't be transmitted back via telemetry so if we turn those on sometimes you might turn this off because you don't want the battery beeping and so on but it, it does actually prevent it being shown back on the uh, on the transmitter we can tweak these values later so just do a save and reboot to commit that change to the uh, flight controller and if we go back to discover new sensors and hit enter there magically appearing is VFAS and current and uh, 16.6 it's about right, it's about what the battery is. Um, VFAS, that's the voltage of your main battery. So there we go, we've got battery voltage, our main battery voltage, that we can use actually on the transmitter. And we've got uh, current. Um, we're not going to set up the current because that's just uh, that's a whole different thing. But uh, let me show you how to configure the Tyrannus so that you can see that main battery voltage on the display. So now that we've got the main battery voltage available on our transmitter, we can set it up to display that value on here, which is very useful. So let's long press the page button to go back to page 13, which is to configure the display. And we're going to go down here and press enter to edit it. And you can scroll through here, but it's actually much quicker to long press the enter key and this actually is a quick way to getting some of your various inputs and so on. We're going to go down to telemetry and if we scroll up we can see these are the sensor values that uh, we saw being discovered. So if we scroll back up until we find VFAS which is the main battery voltage. There we go and pick the one that doesn't have the plus or minus on otherwise you're going to get confused and hit enter. So what else can we display on here? We can set our high and low values but we'll do that some other time. Long press. Let's display the RSSI value just for the sake of it. There's plenty of things we can do here. This just there we go. And again pick the one that doesn't have the plus or minus. Okay so we can exit out of that Excellent. So when our model is selected and um, we long press page, um, we can see two values. Now it's saying no data because I don't have a quad connected at the moment. Um, and it is actually showing values, but one of the quirks of OpenTX is it remembers the last value that it last knew about. So remember that although you've enabled telemetry on the beta flight configuration page, unless you've got the VBAT and current options turned on there, you won't see VFAS or current on the display here. And by the way, VFAS is the main LiPo battery voltage, and I've never actually understood what it stands for or what it means. Um, if you know, let me know in the comments. Now, if you're using an X4R receiver, then you're all ready to go. But if, like me, you've used a smaller XSR, there may be another gotcha. If you take a look here at the sensor values, you'll see an asterisk flashing every time the value is updated. And if they aren't flashing, then the data is only being updated once when the flight controller is rebooted. There's actually a bug in the XSR firmware that causes this, so you will need to flash the latest fixed version. And I'll leave a link to the download that you need. And if you click up here, I've got another video that explains in detail how to flash receiver firmware. So now we have VFAS data, we can go back to the Tyrannus and display it somewhere.
So now that we've got the main LiPo battery voltage available on our transmitter and we want to know what it is with our goggles on, why don't we just make it so that when you flick that switch it uh, reads it out for you so you can hear it. Now if you check up here I have done a really in-depth video which shows you how to set up um, alarms and audio readouts and all sorts of clever things but uh, for the sake of just setting this up on the GT2 we'll just make it so it plays out a voltage value when you flick the switch. This is very easy to do, make sure the model is selected and press page until you get through to the special functions page which is page 10. But nothing set up at the moment press enter to take you onto the second column, press enter again to select it and you can scroll through these but it's just easy just hit the switch and it will select it for you there's two positions up and down you can see the arrow there is pointing up so we want that this way and press enter again and what we want it to do is not play a sound or play a track, we want it to play a value. Press enter and then we need to select what value it's going to play. Now you can scroll through and find all sorts of things in here. Again if you long press enter it will show you the groupings of all those different inputs. Scroll down till you get telemetry showing, press enter and we are going, so you can see here these are all the sensor values coming back from the flight controller. Let's keep going until we find VFAS, which is there. Brilliant. So that's selected. Let's exit. And if I hit that now. 16. 16. That's great. So it's 16 volts. There's all sorts of ways that you can configure that to press that. Um, so it will actually play out to more decimal places but that just shows how you can do it. You can, uh, you can experiment with that however you like. So there we go, you've got telemetry data from your GT2 and we configured it to read out the value of the battery voltage when you hit the switch SH on your transmitter. There's lots more you can do to set up the X9D with data readouts and alarms and if you check out one of my other videos up here you'll find all sorts of notifications, alarms and special functions that you can play with. If you found that useful and you want updates, please like and subscribe to the channel down here. It really does help me make better content. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. I'll see you next time.